Hi everyone, welcome back to Chef Shaw's Kitchen. Don't forget to subscribe. And today's menu, I'm doing Bami Chef Shaw's way, and I'm doing it from scratch. <music> Bami. I have some cassa over here and anybody know about Bami you use a cassava and I have some cassava here cut and I'm gonna show you how to peel the cassava try not to peel your cassava this way straight down this way try to peel it this way much easier and you won't waste your cassava by peeling your cassava this way peel it on the round so i'm gonna peel my cassava and i'm gonna grate my cassava if you have a food processor fine you can use your food processor to cut your cassava but i'm using a grater today a box grater and I'm using the fine side of the grater. I'm using this side to grater my cassavas. And I'm gonna press my cassava in this small cake tin. So it's this size cassava. I'm gonna make this size cassavas. I'm gonna, I mean, sorry, bames I'm gonna make today. So all you need for your for your bami is your cassava and a little salt and when you're gonna fry your, your, your bami I'm soaking it in some coconut milk and then you fry it you can soak your bami from overnight or maybe a few hours before or even an hour before so I'm just gonna peel my bami and I'm gonna show you how to make your bami so as I said before Peel your bami on the round. I'm grating my cassava. So I want to have some bamis in the, in the freezer. I'm gonna keep some bamis in the freezer because this Easter I went to the market and I couldn't get any bamis. So from now on, I'm gonna make sure I have bamis in my freezer because I really love bamis. And for those who don't who don't know, the cassava is from a, a, a plant. It's a it grows underground. Yeah, a very nice staple for us in the Caribbean and Africa. And you know you can get cassava flour now in the supermarkets even in Tesco's I see them selling bamis I mean sorry cassavas I got my cassava though from the market the Leicester market so and you have to be careful when you're grating you use them because it's very sharp so I would suggest if you haven't used a grater like this before, try the, the food processor. Now that my cassavas are grated, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna squeeze the juice now. So I have a, a cheesecloth here. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna squeeze the juice from my cassava, my grated cassavas. There's a lot of water in the in a cassava, so 
I'm just gonna show you. You see the liquid coming out. And we don't want all this liquid in our cassava. You, you, you won't have a, a proper bami. So as much as this liquid, you have to remove from the cassavas. It's not that hard to make um, bames. Take a little a bit of time, but if you have the time, you can make some lovely bames and you can freeze them for a later date. Yes, I get I got almost all the liquid from my cassava. So I'm just going to put it in, in my bowl. Do you see the amount of liquid I got from the cassavas? Yeah, you got to get rid of these, this liquid. So, now I'm going to get it separated now because it's in one big lump. So I'm just going to separate it like this. And if you are wondering why I'm always wearing a blue gloves, it's because I'm not cooking anything blue. So if the gloves break and fell in, in my mixture or in my food, then it's, it is easy, easily visible. So, so I'm just crumbling my cassava. You have to get it like this. Get rid of the lumps. See, almost dry. Some people dry their cassava. When they get it like this, they put it out in their back garden and let it dry. But I have too, much, too many birds in my back garden. So I know they would have a go at my cassava. So I'm just separating my cassava, getting the lumps to get it, as they would say, shelly. Get it in crumbs. And to this, I'm going to add some salt. Salt to taste. I'm going to get a few bames from this cassava here. As I said before, as I said before, I'm using my tin, my cake tin, a very small cake tin. And it's this one, you know, you can open it from the side. So, and I have a bit of grease paper at the bottom, just in case it wants to stick. So I'm just getting out the lumps now. So doing your, your cassava, your grated cassava like this. It, it allow hair, hair to pass through, so it, even, it will be more even dry. All right. So I'm gonna put salt to taste. I have here a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to mix in my salt. And I, as I said before, I'm using the blue gloves. Just in case you have a break on the gloves and it falls into your food, into your mixture. You will see it immediately. That is the reason why I always use a blue gloves because I don't cook anything blue. Nothing that is blue. So now my salt is mixed into my grated cassava. I'm gonna 
add it to my cake tin. As, as I said before, I have a piece of grease paper at the bottom because I'm gonna press it really heavy. And although it's a non-stick pan, with all this pressing, it can stick to the bottom and maybe your cassava will break. And I have the base of another baking tin. So I'm just gonna put this on top. I'm just gonna squeeze it like this. So my bami will be even. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place this bami in my preheated pan. Now my bami is pressed. Press my cassava. So this is my bami. And I'm going to place it in my preheated pan. And I'm going to let this stay. for 10 minutes on either, either side. So it's gonna stay for 10 minutes on either side and then I'm gonna soak it in my coconut milk. So you're gonna have it on, on a low, low flame, a very low flame. So you turn down your flame to the lowest So I'm gonna flip my bami 10 minutes on this side. I'm gonna to get 10 minutes on the other side. And if your bami is too brown, you can just scrape off that. After you're finished with your bami. And when this is finished on the other side, then I'm gonna soak my bami in some coconut milk. Some people just dab it with water. You can also steam your bami or you can soak it in, well, some people soak it in, in water or milk, in like uh, cow's milk. Now my bami is ready, so I'm removing my bami from my pot. And I'm just gonna let this cool down a bit and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna soak it in my milk. So I'm just gonna let this cool a bit and I'm gonna soak my bam my bami and then I'm gonna fry my bami. I've cut my bami in sections, so I'm just gonna let it soak in my coconut milk. So I have two bamis soaking in my coconut milk. I'm just gonna let this soak for maybe an hour and then I'm gonna fry my bamis. Just gonna let this soak. So it's an hour now since my bami, my bamis are soaking. So I'm gonna fry my bamis. You don't need much oil to fry your bami. Don't deep fry your bami. And remember when you put in your bami at first and in your frying pan, you don't need any oil. At first you just want it to cook a little. So now we're frying our bamis. Maybe five minutes, five, six minutes on one side under a low flame. 
and the same on the other. Now my bam is all ready. I'm just removing them from my pot. I'm just gonna dab them with my blue paper towel because as I said before I'm not cooking anything blue so I'm using the blue paper towel so if any should get stuck to my bummy it will be easily visible and if you noticed before when I was looking at putting my bummy in the pot there was no oil at first but when I'm frying it that is the time I use the oil so it is like baking baking the bami for a bit in the in the pot so I'm just dabbing it to get rid of the excess oil and I'm gonna serve this with fried fish escovitch fish I'm just removing the excess oil from my bami. This is my homemade bami, Chef Shaw's way, served with a escovitch fish. And this is a really lovely meal to have, especially in the summertime. And you can take it to the beach. You're having a picnic on the beach. Really lovely meal. So when you try this at home, do it Chef Shaw's way. And don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell and share. See you next week.